Hi, welcome to tutorial one of Android programming using BASIC for Android. This first video will give you a brief introduction to the BASIC for Android application and how to write a very simple program and run it on an Android emulator. This would also enable you to run it on a real Android phone. Okay, so assuming you've already bought BASIC for Android or you're running the trial version, uh, when you first open BASIC for Android it will give you a window like this. This is the IDE for writing your code and you'll notice it gives you a number of subroutines already written. These subroutines uh, refer to declaring variables uh, or objects that, we, that you will use in your program as well as what happens when the program opens or when you, when you go to another application um, such as when the phone rings or you flip back onto your menu screen the home button on your phone or whatever. Um, so you have your process globals here, which are your global variables, which you can use in your whole application. So uh, each screen in an Android application uh, is called an activity. So when you click a button or an icon on an Android application and it opens a new screen, and then you use your back button on your phone to go back to the first screen, that's two separate um, activities which you've been using there. So each so each code, each screen of code on the system. Uh, is an activity. So your globals that you that you declare here will be variables that you can use on any activity in the program. So like global variables for the entire program. The globals here, um, the second sub globals is globals within this activity itself. So if you have two screens on your application, you will have a separate set of globals per screen because each screen will run like a separate program on its own. But the process globals will be global over the whole application for both screens. We'll go more into that later. Uh, activity create is what ha is the first thing it does when you open your program. So when you first open your application on Android from the launcher, it will run the activity create. Activity resume is what happens when it goes back into your application um, when it's been out onto either another activity in your program or you've gone back to your home screen or taken a phone call and then come back onto your program. So it may be that, that you pause the program and then you resume it and you carry on when the program starts up again. So in a similar way, activity paused tells you has the activity been paused and whether it's paused by a user. So when your activity is paused, this is when you take a phone call or when you flick back to your home screen to check something, like a text message or something, and then you go back to your activity. So this is when you, when you go back to the home screen using your home button on your phone not using the back button. The back button will close the activity, whereas the home button will pause it. So we're just going to write a very simple program here to just display a button on the screen and allow us to click that button and share a message. That's all we're going to do. So first thing to do is we need to save our program, give it a name. So let's go to File, Save. Pick a location for where you want to put your application. I'm going to put it in my Dropbox account so I can access it from other places and also so I can give access to it to the public, uh, such as yourselves. Uh, make a new folder to put your application in. I'm going to call it tutorial one. And then in there, give the file a name. So I'm just going to again just call it tutorial one. Uh, basic for Android application and code files will have the extension B4A on them. And they should open in basic for Android automatically if you open them from Windows Explorer. Now that you've saved your tutorial, we can open the designer. So if you just click on the designer on the toolbar, it will open up the B4A designer. This is part of the program that enables you to use simple drag and drop with the mouse to, de to design the layout of your application. Obviously, Android devices have lots of different screen sizes. Uh, we're not going to look into the differences for that one cause for you to use in your code at the moment. We'll look into that in a later tutorial. Uh, one thing I will do though is advise to install the Android emulator um, or create an Android em em emulator and then from within basic for Android select tools, run AVD manager which is your Android virtual device manager. That will open up this window. So in here I've created a, a simple 2.3 Android device which I've already started because they take a few minutes to start, so I started before I started the video. So I'm just going to move that over so I can see it. 
and then with the designer on the screen, the abstract designer and the designer window, the abstract designer will show you kind of a, a layout, like a technical layout of your design, whereas the emulator will actually connect to basic for Android and show you the application as it looks as you design it. So it will show you exactly how it will appear on the phone. So you have a little chain here on your designer window. If you double click that chain, that will connect the designer onto any Android device which is connected to your laptop or your desktop. And this can be the emulator running, which it will treat as a real Android device, or you may have your phone plugged in on a USB cable. So you can see the device screen has now changed. This is showing activity, which is the default name of the program, the type of the program, and a blank screen. My design then, if I now go to add view, uh, view is anything that appears on an Android application. So a button is a view, a checkbox is a view, um, a spinner, um, any kind of toggle buttons, anything that's on here is a view. So we're just going to add a simple button. So you can see when I add the button, the button appears on the abstract designer and on the emulator. The emulator is showing how it will appear on the phone. So I'm just going to change the size of the button. And then on the designer window, you have all the properties of the button that you've just created, the view that you've created. So we're going to change the name of it. We're going to call it my button. In fact, no, let's just call it button one. We'll leave it as it's already called then. And what we're going to do is on the text, we're just going to change it so it says picnic on there. So you'll see on the designer, it still says button one, but on the Android application, the Android emulator, it's changed to click me. This is because the designer will show you the names of the actual views, not what the view actually shows like on the phone. Now we want to give it an action for what to do when you click it. So in tools, there's an option called generate members, and this will generate member functions in your program to deal with what, you ha what happens when you click a button, change a progress bar or whatever. So if I click on generate members, Expand button one, select click, and then click generate members. What will happen is, if you go back to your main IDE window, you'll now see an, an extra function that's appeared called button one click, which means it will run that when we click that button. So we're going to make a message box appear on the screen just to say you've clicked the button. So we're going to use the command message box or show message box. It may actually be message box, sorry. I get confused. Some of them are show, some of them are just message box. So we're going to show show message box. You clicked the button. And then the title of it. Clicked. And that's it. Now, the only other thing we need to do now is on the activity create we need to tell it to show that layout. So we go back to the designer, we save the layout, let's just call it main, and then in here we're going to go activity, load layout, main, and that's it. And this is our complete application. So if I now run the application, it's going to ask me for a name, so I'm going to call it tutorial1. And it needs a complete web address type thing, so let's just call it uh, tutorial1 uh, EA coding for easy Android coding dot com. It asks me for a label, tutorial1, tutorial press OK, where they compile the application and run it on the Android device. So you can see it compiling, it will convert it into full Java code, which means it's running as a proper Android application, it's not running any slower than if you were to write this using Java and Eclipse. This is just much, much simpler for you. Once it's fully compiled, it will install that file to the device. So if I open my emulator, we should see the screen go blank and give the option to click on the button. We go, tutorial one, here's a button. If we click the button, Show us the message box, you click the button, and OK. And that's your very first Android app. Check out tutorial 2, where we'll delve deeper into this, and look forward to hearing any of your comments.